subscription prices. Which they have and they probably will. They probably will again. Yeah. All right. My other low light, and this is the big one, Ryan mentioned it already, is the wasteful spending across so many R&D projects. Now, if I talk to an executive there, if I had the, the lucky chance to talk to one of them, I'm sure they would argue that these projects will create value over the long term. You just can't see it today. They have experiments that are going to be the next AWS. I think that's what they would talk about or the next advertising division or whatever. But my big question is, why do they need to do so many all at once? I'm going to list them off here as quick as possible. All of the projects they are working on outside of their core businesses, I'm sure I'm going to miss some. And these are just from the past two years of press releases. One, Fire TV and Wi-Fi devices. Two, Alexa and Alexa connected devices. Three, Kindle and reading devices. Four, Ring and other home security products. Five, consumer robotics like the Astro Robot and the acquisition of uh, iRobot. Six, just walk out technology and Amazon Go slash fresh stores. Seven, Whole Foods. Eight, Prime Air drone deliveries. Nine, Amazon Music. That also includes podcasts. They acquired Wondery, uh, which is a podcast studio, and a live audio service, which apparently had 300 employees. 10, acquiring MGM Studios. 11, Amazon Care. They're also acquiring One Medical. 12, Project Kuiper, which is a satellite internet sim- service similar to Starlink, hasn't launched yet. Uh, what are we on? 13, Luna Cloud Gaming Service. I mean, what? <laughs> are you kidding? Uh, 14, Amazon Games, which is a video game production company or and publish, slash publisher. 15, Amazon style physical fashion uh, slash apparel, apparel store. It's a, a fashion slash apparel store in person. It's not physical fashion. Uh, 16, Amazon Pharmacy. What did they acquire? Pillpack, right? They, they have a pharmacy division. 17, electric vehicles with the Rivian commitment and Rivian investment. 18, self-driving vehicles. <laughs> these are all just from the past two years. These are all ongoing today. Here, uh, we can't talk about this forever, but what, what's one that needs to go, in your opinion, and one that you think should stay? As uh, I'm sure we have the perfect perspective without any internal data on what ones are working or not. But for fun, what one do you think needs to go and what, what one do you think needs to stay? I'm going to go Luna. I think that's a waste of money. Okay, and they already we'll, fired. They fired a bunch of people. And did, did that's probably gonna. Guys. Yeah, it's probably gonna go. It's gonna get shut down here soon. What one needs to stay? What one do you think? Again, we're not. We don't know. But what one, in your opinion, do you think has the most promise? Oh, oh well, I think, I think having an electric vehicle fleet would save them money. Yes, I think along that could be. Yeah, and then, yeah. I mean they're committed to that now and. It also, I think I remember reading that, I mean, there's probably benefits like ESG wise, maybe a lower cost of capital for doing stuff like that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go, I would have said Luna Cloud. I'm going to go Alexa. I think it's a total bust. And then I think for valuable one, I'm going to say Project Kuiper. I think if you added that on as a feature as Amazon Prime, that's quite valuable for someone. You can get internet in remote spots outside of your home. Um, all right. Yeah, of everything else, that seems to have the most. Like, if you're looking at what could be an AWS, that would probably be the biggest one. Project Kuiper. Yeah. Yeah. Although they're behind Starlink, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, all right. Bull case, Ryan. What are your thoughts? Um. Well, you, we've kind of alluded to it this whole time, which is the higher margin products or services that they have are making up more and more of their revenue. So if they're able to basically just get back to some level of profitability within their commerce, this this is going to have, I think it could have 10% operating margins. And it's obviously growing. There's a lot of, a lot of businesses within it that are growing, but overall in aggregate, it's growing quickly. I I mean... I think I think the the ultimately it's a ten percent operating margin business with a much higher revenue line. I don't think you have to think that much more than that. The problem is sort of what's it going to take to get there. And when you look at, I would say, basically you just have to get higher productivity and utilization out of your fulfillment centers or fulfillment network, which is going to come from a combination of increasing unit volume and maybe, maybe diminishing the capacity that you actually have so to kind of fi- find that balance 
I think there there's a number of reasons that they're going to be able to get the unit volume up, one of which would be buy with Prime. Yeah, uh, I think I have a similar bull case. Very simple. It's just recovering margins back to slightly above 2019 levels. I think that is very doable, doable with AWS ads, subscriptions, and third-party sellers being a larger part of the business today and will likely be an even larger part of the business in 2024, 2025. Um, at 10% operating margins on a $600 billion revenue base, which for reference, what are they? They just, they're It'd just 20% over, more revenue. Yeah. Just that's just 20% growth, which is very doable within a couple of years, if not 2023 or 2024. That's $60 billion in annual operating income. Current enterprise value is 1 trillion. That's, that's the, those are the numbers right there. Let's let go me back. Let me uh, just show, because, a lot of it's around variable costs. That's kind of one of the difficult things that people are having a hard time assessing. Let me show, and oh God, Zoom always does that. This is the chart of cost of containers. And you can see basically it's come down uh, significantly. It's, it's, it was around 1500 from 2017 all the way till 2020. It shot up to ten thousand, eleven thousand dollars. I'm not sure what the metric here is, but basically, I think it was up seven x, eight x, and now it's come back down eighty percent to a little over their 2019 level. So I think, and then it looks very similar for the air freight. So, and natural gas prices have come down as well. I think there's a number of variable costs, and I don't know how they buy. I don't know what contracts they have with other logistics providers or uh, energy suppliers, anything like that. But I have a hard time seeing those costs not come back down and margins revert. Yep. I agree. I agree. Yep. All right. Bear case. It's probably short term more than anything, um, which it was basically, if it takes a while for retail to get profitable again, or there's any sort of a consumer slowdown, which means less utilization rates across the fulfillment network. Uh, and they have another year like this year. Yeah, and I think this could be a uh, this could be a losing stock. I don't I don't really have any like long term concerns, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I the only one is that they just this is my bare case, is that they even if they give, say, a good effort, they find it impossible to rein in their spending. Um, I kind of, as Bezos famously said, was this a one-way door decision to be so experimental with all these things at the same time? And can they bring that in and become profitable? I think it's likely they can, but I, I worry that they can't. And then we just, they keep running at break even forever. <laughs> and that's... Maybe this day one thing was like... Yeah, is that, one it, of the it, worst jinxes. It it maybe it's so ingrained in the culture that they think like any sign of positive cash flow is ruining cash flow for the future. Yeah, it's too much. 